Hello, I am Erdem from Uvizon. In this video, we will learn Norton's theorem. It's very similar to Thevenin's theorem, and most of the discussion applies also on here. Uh, assume that you have a big circuit, and while some part of your circuit remains the same, some part changes over and over, and you call that part as the load. Every time you change the load, you need to analyze this whole big circuit, even though this part remains the same. And assume you are not concerned with the outputs of this circuit. So, analyzing this whole circuit is very cumbersome because you are just you are just interested in the outputs of the load, and you are not interested in the outputs of this uh, part of the circuit. And to deal with this problem, Norton has developed a theorem called Norton's theorem, and according to this one, you can you can replace the part of your circuit which remains always the same with an equivalent and a simpler circuit that consists of an independent current source and a resistor that are in parallel with each other. And this replacement does not affect the outputs of your load, and that's the point of Norton's theorem. You replace your your some part of your circuit with an equivalent and a simpler and outputs of your load does not change. Uh, analyzing this little little pretty circuit is much better than analyzing this whole big messy circuit. Uh, in this video we will first see steps of uh, Norton's theorem and I will I will apply them for this circuit. First step is to disconnect the load. Uh, you will firstly uh, need to disconnect the load if it's connected between A and B terminals. In other words, uh, open circuit, open circuit, A and B terminals. All right. And second step. That is to find find Norton current, I N R. That's to find Norton current. How you'll find it? Connect, connect A and B terminals. You will connect A and B terminals with a wire. What does it mean? It means short, short circuiting A and B terminals. Let me show how you'll do it. That's terminal A. That's terminal B. All right. You have removed the load already. And you will connect these two with a wire. You will short circuit them. And you will find this current flowing from A to B. This is this is your Norton INR current. You will find that one. Third step. Third step. Uh, here one more T. Third step is to find uh, Norton equivalent resistance find find uh, R and R. You, the way you find this Norton equivalent resistance is exactly the same the way you find Norton not Thevenin equivalent resistance. So you will kill all independent sources. You will kill all independent sources, and then you will find equivalence resistance between uh, A and B terminals. If there are dependent sources, you will connect a test voltage source, and you will find current flowing through that source. You will divide voltage value of that uh, test voltage source into uh, current flowing through uh, that source. And that will be your R and R. Norton equivalent resistance. Fourth step is to uh, replace everything into, sorry, replace everything with the simpler circuit. All right, let's see how you will apply. Uh, let's start with the first step. Uh, I will disconnect the load and I will redraw the circuit for you. Here we have two ohms, six ohms. And two ohms here and terminal A here terminal B. Drawing may look a little messy. Sorry for that. Here you have your resistances. Uh, terminal A terminal B. 
All right, we have completed terminal. Sorry, we have completed step one. Now step two is to find I and R Norton equivalent current. And how you'll find it? You will connect A and B terminals. In other words, you will short circuit A and B terminals. Let me short circuit them. I have connected wire like this, and I will find this current I and R. How we will find it by analysis methods, of course, and I'm applying node analysis. If I find voltage of this node, I can divide it by two. I can divide it by two because I have assigned ground node to this. If you divide it by two, you can find current, and then you can find I and R easily. Um, while while going from this node to this node, we have increased in voltage by twelve by 12 so we know voltage of this node uh, as 12, 12 volts we don't know voltage of this volt so that is uh, unknown node voltage EA that's A we need to write down a KCL to find EA and I'm writing that down here uh, we don't know current through this one assume it to be away from uh, node A so current through it is EA minus 12 over 2 we don't know current through this one that is EA over 6 simply and we don't know current through this one that is uh, EA over 2 whole equals 0 by KCL okay from this equation you can find uh, you can find EA as 18 times 2 over 7 volts meaning 36 over 7 volts so EA is 36 over 7 volts we found EA and uh, naturally current will flow in this direction right so uh, after finding this current that will automatically equal to I and R what is that current that's very easy to find we will divide voltage difference across that resistor by resistance. Voltage difference is simply 36 over 7 divided by 2 to get resistance, sorry, to get current. That makes 18 over 7. And unit is amps. That's automatically equal to I and R. I and R. So we have found I and R right now. Let's move on to third step. Uh, I will write down here. Third step is to find equivalent Norton equivalent resistance. I will kill all independent sources, and actually there is one independent source, so uh, that's not very hard. Here is the redrawing of the circuit. Here we have two ohm, two ohm. Okay. Notice something, uh, short circuiting, short circuiting does not apply in third step because that's that was only for second step. You will not continue uh, from the version of the circuit which is short circuited. You will continue from open circuited original circuit because we have disconnected load. Our original circuit is then this one, this one. All right. A and B terminals are not connected. Okay, then uh, finding equivalent resistance here is very easy. Uh, R and R is simply 3.5 ohms. Notice these are in parallel. These are reduced into one single resistance uh, with one single resistor with resistance 1.5 ohms. And these are in series then, that makes 3.5 ohms. Fourth step is very easy now. We will replace everything, everything with Norton equivalent. And that's, that's just putting values into their places. What we found INR is 18 over 7 amps and R and R is 3.5 ohms and that's how you find Norton equivalent of a circuit of course you can find Norton equivalent of a circuit if that circuit is linear and that's an important point 
that's all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching.